Good afternoon. I'm Cindy Bertram. Thanks for joining me today on Good Ship Happens. And as we've had some wonderful things going on this past week, I'll talk a bit more. I had a chance to actually take Enjoy Brightline. That is the relatively new train service. High end it goes from Miami up to Fort Lauderdale. Also, they're moving on establishing a, 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 a terminal to actually go up to Orlando. I'll talk more about that later. It was a great experience. Fantastic. Finally, enjoy it after talking about it before. But also, we actually had a new a ship that was actually christened named this week, the Carnival Venezia, and that's kind of a cruise line ship. And she actually arrived into New York City and on June 13th in the morning. And then on Wednesday evening on June 14th, they did the actual celebration naming ceremonies. And it was actually christened by... Jay Leno, yes, he is the first godfather that Carnival Cruise Lines has ever had, but Jay Leno was actually selected and did the ceremonies as being the godfather, so he christened the ship. And then the um, Carnival Venezia was going to be sailing out. She sailed out on the morning of June 15th from the Manhattan Cruise Port for a special four-day cruise to Bermuda. And she will be sailing from Manhattan, New York um, now, and we're offering different types of itineraries. So it's good to see another ship actually you now departing from New York City. As mentioned, I was on another ship that just repositioned their ships to sail out of New York City, too, which is great, too. But once again, we have a new ship. This is Kristen, Carnal Venezia, Kristen by a godmother, Jay Leno, which was really fantastic to hear about. I had some business friends that are actually on board, and they shared pictures. It looked like it was just phenomenal. Um, and also something else came up, too, is... Um, with the Carnival Venezia, they're offering a fun Italian style with this ship. And as far as their shopping experiences, they actually have some um, new luxury boutiques as well, which is great. And they partner with Star Wars Cruise Services. And they actually have some new retail locations on board their Carnival Venezia, which is great. So it's good to see these kinds of things going on. Something else that Carnival mentioned this week, too, was... Uh, they are planning to do some dining room menu enhancements this year, too. They will be enhancing their main dining room offerings over the next several months, bringing more variety with nearly 60 new entrees and entree presentations on rotation, fleet-wise. And they will be piloted by On the Carnival Dream, which, which actually just started June 17th, and it will be rolling out on their fleet-wide this fall. And they actually have mentioned they're going to be doing some new food opportunity services in their main dining rooms, fleet-wide. And as mentioned, it started on the Carnival Dream this past week. And what they're doing is it's going to be offering Carnival's popular specialty dining restaurants, of course. And also guests can order different things, too. So it's kind of fun to see how um, cruise lines are moving forward as far as culinary options, too. And I'll be sharing more about that later on. And something else, I was just last week at the uh, World Travel Expo Miami. World Travel Expo was supposed to take place in 2020. They had to postpone it until this year. And it was held in Miami, which is great. And I had a chance to be there for the whole conference. It was great. They had different speakers, presentations, booths by different companies. It was fantastic in one of the presentations they had was, was an update from what's going on as far as the cruise industry. And one thing that came up, too, is we have different beautiful river cruise lines. Ama Waterways is a very luxury river cruise line. They've been around 21 years. And Kristen Kartz is actually the co-founder and executive vice president. Mentioned some things they're doing. I'd heard about this before, too. But what they're doing is in 2024, they are going to actually... They just announced again, too, that they're going to be doing their groundbreaking Columbia journeys across the magnificent Magdalena River. And people can now reserve their spots on these different cruises in for 2024 and 2025. And it's the first river cruise line to really sub to really sail on this really, really breathtaking river. And they let explore, they call it the land of thousand rhythms. It sounds fantastic and it's going to be off, being offered on their Ama Magdalena and also their Ama Melodia. And it's really going to be authentic shore excursions. Um, there are different itineraries with the Columbia River Cruises offering 
uh, culture and beautiful landscapes too. And one thing that are going to be included, so people need to know about this too, to think about it is there are seven at River Cruises are going to be offering um, all on board dining is included, specially welcome, captain's gala dinners, sip and sail, cocktail hour, and also unlimited um, complimentary Wi-Fi, which is great. And they've got their El Banco shoreside dinner and exclusive Columbia performance. And they've got immersion, very, very immersive guided shore excursions in every port, including walking and hiking tours. And just looks like wonderful, wonderful things. With Ama Waterways, they, of course, are a well-known river cruise line. They've been in business for over 21 years. Very high-end, beautiful. And they also go to areas of Africa, also um, the Nile Rivers. And now, in starting in 2024, they will be sailing on the Columbia Rivers, too, which is great. So they're, they're special uh, Columbia and Magdalene River cruises will be starting in 2024, and people can now book those cruises too. It's, of course, river high level, and also with um, Ama Waterways, Rudy Schreiner, who's a co founder owner, actually is known as the architect of the river cruise line industry. He actually was an architect first, then moved to the US, did different things, helped other companies start river cruise lines, and then in 2002, he and two other partners, including Christine, decided to work on launching Ama Waterways. And Ama, by the way, means love, yes. But they do beautiful things. I've not had a chance to sail them yet, but they do wonderful things. It's so good to really see what they're doing as far as the Columbia River because it looks gorgeous, fantastic. And this is another way to really, really explore it very safely in, in a really, really fantastic luxury setting too as well. Something else that uh, is important too is you know, with MSC Cruises, they just actually, Chris, and I mentioned it in my previous episodes, their newest ship. It's the first green neutral ship, and they're really working hard on sustainability issues. That's their, their MSC Arabia. And she was just christened a couple weeks ago, but what they're doing too is they just um, did some announcements because with MSC Group, which owns the MSC Cruises, they're launching Explore Journeys this summer. Also, they've got their MSC Foundation, but with the cruise division of MSC Group earlier this week, they mentioned they've got two major initiatives they're working on to really make operations sustainable, including a new agreement as far as liquid, liquefied natural gas, which is also known as LNG, and a new effort to really expand its shore power plan, too. Because once again, we're seeing trends with different ports offering shore power. It's another way for the cruise lines operate off the shore power when they're docked there rather than having to worry about going through fuels themselves. And what they did was um, MSC and the, it's called Gasm have signed a long-term contract agreement for the supply of liquefied natural gas for MSC Cruises' newest flagship, the one I mentioned, the MSC Urbia, and also got a letter of intent to actually cooperate to supply authentic synthetic ELNG made renewable energy too. So once again, this is really, I think, one thing to share with people too, because once again, with the cruise lines, they're working far to be really carbon neutral by 2050, but the cruise lines themselves are working very, very hard to achieve that even before 2050. And once again, it just goes back to, people need to know about this too, because they're really hard, working hard to really decrease the emissions that, that go into the oceans also do things too because we need to know about that too more than ever and share it because cruising the cruise industry is really keep working hard on this too and this is just one beautiful example of what what MSC group is doing and just really reducing those 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 gas emissions which we need more than ever and this agreement sounds fantastic it's a little bit more complicated but i can share more later and also something else we've got more ships coming out one is the Sun Princess, and she will be debuting, I believe, um, I think in 2024. But it is uh, called the Sun Princess. That's Princess Cruises. By the way, Princess Cruises, besides selling the Caribbean, Europe, different places, they also sail, of course, in Alaska. And they just won an award, I think, about a week and a half ago, as far as being voted the best Alaskan 
the best cruise line to take for Alaska, which is great too. And they've been sailing to Alaska for a long time. But what they did was they just announced a new area. It's going to be on their Sun Princess coming out. And it's going to be actually their top family activity zone. And they're going to have their first roll glider at sea. And it's going to be, um, I think, on the top two decks of that ship. It's going to be the first roll glider at on a cruise ship too. And it's going to be um, good as far as um, offering challenges, a jogging track, also other activities, but it's going to be a way to really engage family members too. So definitely keep that in mind because cruise lines really want to make sure that they bring new experiences to people that are actually sailing on ships. And with the roller, roller, roll glider, apologize, it's going to be located on decks 19, 20, and 21. And Park 19 actually includes nine different offerings, including their um, sea breeze, the sea breeze, the first, the roller glow, roll glider. And this uses an overhead track with seated and harnessed um, riders that can each reach speeds up to 11 miles per hour during a 60 to 90 second experience. And also they've got this coastal climb it's going to be a climbing structure where participants can actually um, ascend from decks 19 and 20 through a series of obstacles. Once at the top, they can then take in the views before sliding down to the bottom. Something else is mentioned too, as far as the um, the lookout. Okay, that is an actually they call it the lookout open aired observation for 360 degree views from the highest point available on passenger. On passengers available to passengers on the sea on the sun princess and then below the splash splash zone provides a women's school splash pool for with pop jets and water sculpture and you know with the um people can actually see where they're can go through different areas too it sounds fantastic just one thing to really think about too they've also got a hammock area which i think i would enjoy myself the hammock area is actually in, in Park 19, where this is going to actually take a break from the action and relax and just with family and friends. They've got their recreational court that provides a rotation of sports, wellness options, activities, including ping pong, uh, shuffleboard. They've got fitness classes and morning meditation. And then the open air jogging track is a place to walk. You can jog, you can run with 6.7 times around equaling one mile. So you can get your workout done too, but seeing the beautiful oceans where you're sailing too, which is great. In addition to the family-centric offerings that are found, they've got their youth and, and teen centers too. That's located on decks six and seven. And they've got also other areas, appropriate areas for those who are maybe six months to 17 years old. Also, they've got uh, some other complimentary areas. This includes the Firefly Park which is on deck six for eight for children ages six months to seven years with their families. They can explore and play and specialize. And then the parents can actually kick, can actually drop off their kids to program art projects, theme parties, things like that too. And then of course the Firefly Park also invites families with babies and toddlers, as mentioned, six months to set three years to crawl and engage to the senses in a dedicated play park too, which is great. But it's just one just thing too to see how cruise lines are moving forward, different entertainment areas, and the Sun Princess Top Deck Family Activity Zone sounds really fantastic too. I'll be sure you mark that later on because I think she comes out in 2024. And I mentioned we've got uh, of course new ships coming up too. Uh, we've got another one. Got more cruise lines coming up with new ships. As mentioned, Explore Journeys will be sailing this July. I'll be sure about that too. That's actually a new high level luxury cruise line brand that was actually owned by MSC Group. MSC Group actually, as mentioned, owns the MSC Cruises, which they've had for several years. They actually have their MSC Foundation, and then they've got with their Explore Journeys too. And they've got their MSC Container Shipping Company. But with Explorer Journeys, their first ship, the Explorer 1, is going to be debuting this summer in July. I'll be sharing more about that, too, because it's great to share different stories like this more than ever because we need that. And things to look forward to. This is actually their their tagline is, is bringing the ocean life to sea. 
and it's going to be luxury, different things included, very, very small ships, I think under 200 guests, but very luxury, different experiences, and they really want you to explore the ocean in different ways. So it's good to really share these kinds of things more than ever. Another cruise line coming up with a new ship coming up, as mentioned before, in January of 2024 is actually Royal Caribbean, and that's their Icon of the Seas. They've been mentioning more about that. I'll share more about that in maybe next week's episode because they keep adding more information about it. It is actually going to be the largest cruise ship ever built. Yes. In the whole history of the cruise industry. Icon of the Seas coming out in January of 2024. We'll have different more experiences for their guests to have. And with Royal Cremen, they're really, really family friendly, but also adult area things to do too. So That'll be coming up more. I'll share more about that later when I get more details, too, and keep you updated on that, too, because we need that more than ever. Um, and then something else mentioned, I got a chance to actually take a Brightline train service last week on Tuesday, and I went to their beautiful terminal in Miami, and their train station there it looks almost like a mini airport. I walked in. The escalator is going up. I already had my ticket. I went. You had to walk around to get to their areas. They have beautiful areas to sit and relax. Uh, they had another place if you want to grab something to eat. In my case, I had a premium ticket, and they also have a premium lounge on board area there, area too. It's practice for people with premium tickets. Then we got on the train, and the train seats were gorgeous, beautiful. They're leather seats, a lot of space, and once again, they do have different things as far as beautiful windows. You can see the outdoor views. It's fantastic. And with their high-speed trains, they actually go maybe about 79 miles per hour, but they have special tracks they use. And what we do is we did stop in Aventura first, and we went up to Fort Lauderdale, got off the at the train station there, went back up to their primary area once again that area is for people to actually relax enjoy purchase food bars things like that I had access to the premium lounge which is great they had free drinks appetizers things like that too but the views were just phenomenal big window walls and once again it's very very high in luxury and what they did was brightline trains actually started with the idea in 2017 they wanted to really create a new experience and once again it really is is fantastic if you are maybe traveling and it's too short of a flight, but maybe too long of a drive is how they explain it. Yes. Because once again, if you go to Fort Lauderdale, depending on traffic, sometimes it could be 45 minutes. Sometimes I've seen it for an hour. Once again, with the Brightline trains, it was under 30 minutes, which is great. And once again, it relieves the stress of driving. And their um, train stations right now with the one they've got in Miami is really close to uh, Port Miami. So if you're thinking about maybe doing a cruise from Port Miami, you could actually take Brightline to Port Miami and then, you know, get the service taxi, whatever, to get to the uh, Port Miami. Also, with their their train station in Fort Lauderdale, that, of course, is close to Fort Port Everglades, which is Fort Lauderdale's big port. And then later on, later on this summer, they're working to actually extend their train into Orlando, they're right now building a new train station there. But one thing that came up, too, I've mentioned before, is with taking cruises, another option to think about is you can actually take a cruise from Port Canaveral, which is maybe an hour away from Orlando Airport. I did that a long time ago in the 1990s. But once again, once they start getting their train service up into Orlando, it's something to think about, too, because Orlando is a good couple hours away, maybe a two or three hour drive. So it's really, really relieved some stress there too, if you wanted to do that instead. And Orlando, of course, is of course the home of Walt Disney World, other parks too, but with having an option too, as far as maybe train, taking a Brightline train to go up to Orlando or whatever, it just is another option. And I'll tell you what, I was just so pleased to actually finally be able to experience it. I'm gonna share it like crazy because it was beautiful. The trains were leather seats. The big window walls, it was great. The separate bathrooms and easy to get on and off. And we actually got off at our train station destination. And then we went up to inside to relax a little bit before I took my train back to from Fort Lauderdale back to Miami, which is great. 
and I'll be sharing more with that too. But once again, it really has a fit for different things because very they, also you can actually take a bike and have it stored there too, luggage if you want to. So once again, it's just something to think about too. And I know down the road that they do plan to expand across the country right now with Brightline. They are privately owned and they do have some plans to expand across the country down the road too. But it was great to finally experience it after seeing a video that we shared about it a while back and also just hearing more about it when I've talked to different people, including some of their staff members too. Mark, did you have any questions for me or not? Glad to be joining you. I'm actually at work here at the Haiti Heritage Center. We had some events going on on this particular day, but you know, it is Father's Day and they were doing a Father's Day event earlier and I was actually doing some research and saw that there were quite a few cruises that folks were doing revolving around Father's Day and all in that space, including some that were riverboat cruises. So seeing that there were Father's Day cruises as well as some that are around Independence Day, because I did see that something called Lake Hickory had a Father's Day steak and seafood dinner cruise and in that space. And then I saw that there was one in DC that was going on on one of those river boats and the Tennessee river boat also had one. So if folks were trying to figure out ways to celebrate or maybe they want to plan for next year, these are things that they might want to look into because even Tampa has something called the Yacht Starship and they were having some activities as well. So it looks like there were quite a few cruises that were specifically geared toward the uh, whole Father's Day celebrations and all of that, including some of the big cruises, because I did see that Viking Cruises had one as well. So that was just some of what I was seeing that I thought our listeners might be interested in, and they can also go and sometimes even have a 4th of July celebration as well, because I did see that there were some 4th of July celebrations that were taking place that folks might be interested in and all along those lines. As a matter of fact, I think one of them was actually taking place right there during the Macy's 4th of July activities and all in that kind of space. So it does look like they are sometimes tied into bigger events and all in that way. But to those that are interested, if you'd like to take a minute and take a pause, we can take a look at the Tennessee Riverboat and see what they're all about. Because I did pull up their video and maybe people would be interested in hearing about the Tennessee Riverboat. So let's check out the Tennessee Riverboat. Great.
That looks great. So relaxing. Yeah. I mean, I like, I like ocean cruising, but once again, too, is after we're getting through the issues with coronavirus, I think people felt like we were safe as far as maybe sailing in the U.S. and the rivers. Mm-hmm. And we've got options out there, of course, too. Uh, one is American Cruise Lines. They're family owned. Another is American Queen Voyages, which has been around for close to 12 years. But it's another option to think about, too, if you would mm-hmm. do that, too. Because one well, thing- As you mentioned, American Queen, I actually saw that they do some stuff even with history and all along those lines, because I actually pulled up one where the uh, gentleman, I think it is, is talking about some of that history around American Queen and some of the unique things that they do on their cruise and all along those lines. So I'm hoping that I can pull that up shortly. As a matter of fact, I'm getting ready to pull it up right now. So let's check out what American Queen is all about, because you've mentioned them several times on several of our shows. And this gentleman even talks about the fact that there are historians. And I actually just did a historical narrative about some of the history <coughs> here in Durham. So I know how those historians can be a vital part of any kind of cruise like that, because we were talking about a mainland history kind of thing, but definitely it can work on a cruise line as well. So let's check out about American Queen. Hi, Phil Schwartz here with Holiday Cruises and Tours, and today we're on the American Queen with Great American Steamboat Company. And I thought I'd give you a tour around the ship today. Right now we're standing on the top deck far forward. Nice place to come up and just sit and enjoy the river. As you can see, when you're sitting here, you have a great view out across the Mississippi River, and I can see the barges floating by and the banks going by. So it's just a great place to be. And there's a number of these kind of places around the ship here where you can sit out on these porches and just enjoy a nice leisurely stroll down the river. We're now in the chart room. This is far forward high up in the deck and there's big windows out front that you can see out across the river and so on. And then this is a great little room. Uh, It has a fake wheel in it, of course, a fake steering wheel. Uh, But then there's cabinets full of books and some uh, charts like laying here on the table that you can follow along exactly where we're at on the river and see all the features of the river. Now, oftentimes we will have the River Lorien in here. Now, a river Lorian is a river historian, knows all about the river, how to read the river, the lights on the river, the history of the river. And this person is stationed in here every day for a couple hours. You can ask questions and so on. And then sometimes down in the Grand Saloon, they will also give uh, lectures about the river and the history of the river. So it's a great feature here on Great American Steamboat. Here we are in one of my favorite places on the whole ship. This is the Mark Twain Gallery. And you can see it's just a great place to sit and relax, maybe read a book during the day. Has great furniture, vintage furniture in here. And uh, it's a great place to meet your friends for a cocktail before uh, dinner or something like that. Uh, It's just a wonderful gathering place on here. And then just uh, after here, we'll move on to a couple of uh, the other rooms out into the ladies' parlor and so on. I'll introduce those to you in just a minute. Well, welcome to the ladies' parlor. This is a great place. Now, it's not just for ladies. They just call it the ladies' parlor. But you look at all the vintage furniture in here. It's just wonderful. Right across from the ladies' parlor is the gentleman's card room. It's good, heavy, rugged furniture, has some great mounted pieces here, boar's head, fish mounts, and so on. Uh, Just a great place to come and sit, you know, and enjoy the company of your friends. Ah, now here's a great little feature on the American Queen. You can stop by one of these cappuccino machines, and they're all around the ship, and get yourself espresso, latte, Americano, cappuccino, uh, hot chocolate, anything you want. Of course, it's all included in the price here on the American Queen. So you come by in the evening, maybe after dinner, and you say, ah, I just need one of those little cappuccinos, and there it is. Ah, great cappuccino. How about a hot dog? Sure, anytime, 24 hours a day. Come on up to the front porch. That's where we're at right now. Breakfast is served here, light breakfast, fruits and cereals, things like that. And then all through the day, all through the night, come get yourself a hot dog, a snack, chips, cookies. Over here we have popcorn, we have soft served ice cream, Coke products. So anything you want up here, just come on up, help yourself 24 hours a day. 
Now, we just stepped out from the front porch onto the real front porch. That's right, from where you can pick up some food and some hot dogs, and then you bring them out here, sit down in one of these nice rocking chairs, sit on the porch swing out here on America's front porch here on the American patient. Queen. So the patient will work right in front of Ah, when you want something to drink, this is a place to come to. This is the Calliope Bar at the River Grill. And they have all kinds of good drinks here. They're open from late morning throughout the afternoon and the evening. But it's not just a bar. It's also the River Grill. Over here, there's a nice grill in the back, nice little salad bar and so on. Great places to sit out here. You're out in the open. And if it's just a nice evening, you just can't beat it to come and get something to eat. Enjoy good company and good uh, friends. Well, as you can tell, we're on the very top of the ship. Yeah, the sun's shining down. I shouldn't be dressed like this. I should have my swimsuit on. Lay in one of these nice comfy chairs. Soak up a few rays, and then when you get hot, you come over here and jump in the, uh, yeah, it's kind of a pool, I know. It's not really a lap pool. We're on a small ship, remember. It's more of a dipping pool, a place to jump in and cool off a little bit. And then just behind that, you'll see what they call the athletic club, and it's a little workout center, a couple treadmills, elliptic machines, a little weight machine, uh, but it is a place that you can come and work out while you're on the American Queen. Okay, here we are in one of your favorite places on any ship out there. That's right, we're in the dining room. Morning, noon, night, great food served here in a great atmosphere. Sit down at one of these tables. They have tables of two, tables of four, six, eight, and you can visit with your friends in just a great atmosphere. Look at the early Americana in this room. It's just a wonderful place to come and have a relaxing meal served by great people. Well, that was the American Queen, and it looked like a fun place to go. It looks like a wonderful trip and all of that, and it definitely was kind of quaint, not as uh, detailed-oriented maybe as the bigger cruises, but definitely right. you having a relaxing and enjoyable time on that cruise and maybe not having the full swimming experience, but just dipping your toes in and all in that space. But it definitely looked like it would be some fun to have on that particular day. Yes, and one thing about the name that's been, that was probably a couple of years ago because what they did was – when they first started, it was called American Queen Steamboat Company. Mm -hmm. What they did was they decided to do a rebranding in 2000. I'm trying to think of the rebranding was maybe 2021, um, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes, 2021. So I was at um, a conference and they were doing a big PR announcement of what they did before. I saw what they're doing, but they renamed it American Queen Voyages because mm -hmm. once again, they actually purchased rather smaller ships. And then when the COVID-19 hit, they had to postpone that. But once again, they do offer cruises that sail on lakes as well as rivers and also seas because of the smaller ships they bought, they actually want the sails in the Alaska area. Oh, cool. and once again, it's really, really great because once again, what they do is they also have unlimited guided tours. They're mm -hmm. complimentary. You have unlimited beverages. They've got um, sponsored They have their food. As far as what they do is they also try and get food items that are directly from the areas that they go to visit first, too, which is great. And unlimited Wi-Fi, certain things like that. And it's just another relaxing thing to do, too. They off also offer cruises that sail through the Great Lakes. I had a chance to see one of their ships that was actually going to be launching from uh, Chicago which is great. And I got to see the ship when she was going to be departing a couple hours later, they had us come up for a, a tour of it, ex explore it. The ship had lunch on board, different people there too. It was great. Oh, it, sounds, it sounds like it sounds like it'd be real fun. It is. And once again, they're not really huge ships. We got a chance to see some estate rooms really beautiful, but once again, the dining and they've also, they partnered with uh, chef Regina Charbonneau. She's very, very well known. And, she actually is on some ships sometimes too, as far as cooking classes, but she seems very energetic. I actually interviewed for an article a long time ago when they first started. But they do different things too. Once again, it's a good way to really kind of explore certain things if you want to, because they have theme things too. For instance, um, one that came up too, I know, is just um, sometimes they'll have um, 
different areas. For instance, I know with American Cruise Lines, they've been around for a long time, too, longer than American Queen Voyages, but American Cruise Lines is family owned. Mm -hmm. And what they've got coming out in 2024 is they actually have a special, some sailings that are going to be going to visit the battlefields of the Civil War. Oh, wow. And they're going to be going on five different rivers and 13 different states and kind of pick and choose. But, you know, history is really important, too, as far as thinking about the rivers, because we think we sometimes forget about the history we've got in the United States. And this is another beautiful way to see it and experience it, too. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Definitely have to have that history. And a lot of times, like uh, right. the gentleman mentioned, I don't know if they still have the uh, laureates that are on there, but that kind of reminds me of a poet laureate. So it might be some of these cruises that will have historians that know the lore of the river and also know the lore of the uh, villages and towns that they are going to as well. So <clears throat> that can be very important, particularly if you've got somebody on the ship that knows that history, that can share some of that history and maybe even embellish it sometimes because a good storyteller may do that as well since they are involved in that space. Because one thing I've had a chance to do too is earlier, uh, it's probably about a month ago, I had a chance to do um, a special presentation. Lynn Blad Expedition was doing in Chicago. They're doing across the country. And I that's when I told you I mentioned I met their captain. Mm-hmm. Is going to be sailing on their Alaskan cruises, Captain Cook. Captain Cook. Captain Andrew Cook. But with Lindman Expeditions, they actually go to Antarctica, different places. They're small, 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 very small ships. Only handle maybe under 200 guests at the most. What they do is when they go to some of the places in the Antarctic, they have special experts on board. Oh, wow. Escort you there, too, which is great. So, once again, it's a good way to really think outside the box. I mean, I do like ocean cruising myself, but once again, there's so many options out there now. And I really think it goes back to what do you want to choose as far as your experience? And what do you want to see? But your experiences, because I really think, and this came up with the World Travel Expo Miami conference was at last week for a couple of days. But what came up, too, is we were, they talked about, they had different panels with different experts, executives. What they mentioned too was I really think that coming through coronavirus, COVID-19, has really made a different mindset as far as traveling. You know, after I went through 9-11, it was very, very tough. I actually worked in my family's retail travel agency. And although I, some people wanted to travel, very few people were they were worried, they were worried about flying. They'd rather take a road trip. They were scared to death of flying. But once again, we saw there as people decided to just like cocoon. And purchase things. They were scared of flying. And you know what came up too is the airlines really jumped in to really make flying much more safe. As far as what you can take on board the planes, etc. And but I see I think with this dragging on for over two years, you know, we're out of it, which is great. But I think right. now is people had to work and be in isolation. And it really gave them a different mindset about what they really want to do. They really want to explore and see different places, not sit there and buy stuff, basically. It's just yeah, okay. that I don't like the term bucket list, but once again, I think we're seeing a lot more people want to really go to different places and immerse themselves in the culture. Mm -hmm. That's why I think it's so exciting with Ama Waterways, which is actually going to be doing their Columbia River Cruises in 2024, 2025. Oh, wow. And they're going to be the first, I think, really well-known river cruise line to actually do that. And once again, their, their river cruise line ships, because they were actually designed, they always designed by Rudy Schreiner, the, the co-founder and owner. He's an architect. And with them, he's able to adapt. So the ships are going to be doing, they've got two of their river cruise line ships going to be sailing down that way too, but they were really not huge. And they were able to navigate the rivers down there too, which is great. Well, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Have you ever had the chance to go? Because I was going to bring that up as well. Um, because, like I said, it's Father's Day today, but in two weeks, it'll be the 4th of July, actually, less than two weeks. Right, I think right. about it. And all in that space. But I was wondering, have you ever gone on a cruise during that time of the year? Because I did have some information to share about somebody that had that pleasure. And I think they did it last year where they got to go on a cruise and see what that was like in New York City during 4th of July weekend. So maybe this will inspire some folks as well. If you want to check out this particular person, I think it's a young lady's yes. uh, view of what she went through when she went on a new, I mean, a 4th of July um, cruise and all in that space. So I think we'll check that out if you're interested yes. in checking it out. Sure, definitely.
So that's our Batu New York experience for this 
4th of July. Hope you like it. See you in our, ne see you in our next vlog. <laughs> Bye. Can you imagine what that would be like sitting there on a boat like that, just seeing the fireworks going off? That was just a taste of it, but I can imagine that that right. would be a fun experience to have and all in that kind of way, is sitting there on the boat here in the band, which we didn't have that much of, but definitely seeing right. the fireworks, which we did get to see a decent amount of, and the food and all of that nine yards. So that would be a definite wonderful experience, I would think to enjoy and all in that kind of way. But like I said, I haven't had the pleasure of doing one. Maybe you've had that pleasure, but I have not had that pleasure as of yet. It's on the bucket list, maybe. Right. But Cruise Lines do have special events that, for the holidays, too. Right. So at Fort July, I'm sure they're doing special things to onboard their ships, which is great. And one time was on um, Disney. I think we did. They did shoot fireworks off as we were leaving different areas, too. So it's good to keep in mind if you're looking at maybe taking a cruise for a special event, whatever. Keep in mind they will do wonderful activities on board the ships, too. Yeah, because I didn't know about the fact that the Coast Guard would be the involved in the uh, shooting of the fireworks and everything. But that's one of the things that she brought up with that apparently the Coast Guard, because I'm sure they have safety protocols, was also right. making sure that they were following those safety protocols as they were probably off in the distance because you don't want to be anywhere that is too close to uh, incinerary kind of areas and all in that space. So I imagine that there are rules even for out there in the river, just like they would be in the ocean. And I know right. they have those rules in the ballparks and other places that they shoot fireworks. You've got to have uh, certain folks that are <clears throat> have those skill sets and know how to handle those uh, fireworks because you don't want just anybody and right. they won't know what they are doing and it could be detrimental and it definitely could cause some uh serious problems and all in the right. kind of way so it was great to see that they are taking uh necessary precautions as the uh case may be and all of that you had oh, mentioned thank, at the beginning you. about That's bright great. lines and i saw that they were thinking that bright lines could actually be a uh avenue that some of the people in the rail conversation because i know they've been having conversations about rail in america and rail throughout america and uh, there was a report a little bit shorter report about how brightline could be the face of the future in that space and i know you did that chance to enjoy it so i didn't know if you wanted to catch this three minute video that they had about what brightline was doing there down in orlando because i did pull that up as well that'd be great it was just so good to experience it i had I, they had asked me to maybe try and do it when I was back in Fort Lauderdale for that Sea Trek Cruise Global Conference in March. It didn't work out. It was kind of busy. And then when I was down at, back in Fort Lauderdale for the Cruise Lines International Association, their conference for two days, I didn't have a chance to do it because I had to fly to New York to see on the Embassy Maravilla, but to really be able to see it. And I wouldn't have, I can't explain how beautiful their train station is in Miami. Wow. It's like a mini airport is how they explain it. It's a mini airport. It's gorgeous. I mean, I walked in and I reached out to somebody for help. He actually walked me through what escalators, walked me up where I had to go, whatever, because I had a premium ticket, complimentary. He told me where the, the premium lounge was. Hmm. Yeah, you actually, I had a chance if you wanted to grab little snacks, coffees, whatever you wanted was right there. And then when I actually got into Fort Lauderdale, we had some time hit before I took my train back. I went to the premium lounge there. It was fantastic. It they sell like beautiful it. areas too for food, whatever you want to get. They sell beautiful areas there too. But once again, the premium ticket does include using the premium lounge at their different train stations. And it was just gorgeous. You would not think it's a regular train station. That's all I got. That's how I can explain it. That's the way they described it on this report. But let's check out this particular report and see what they're talking about about the new Bright Line service. I think this came out last month. Okay. Tonight, the long-awaited Brightline route from Miami to Orlando is a major step closer to reality. The high-speed train service unveiled its brand new station at Orlando International Airport today. Tickets for a nearly three-hour trip from Miami will be going on sale soon. Local 10's Christina Vasquez was the only South Florida reporter to travel to Orlando for the unveiling. Brightline officials say get ready, Miami, for a high-speed train trip to Orlando. Brightline unveiled its new station at Orlando International Airport. The last stop to realizing its years long vision of connecting Miami to Orlando. Two of Florida's most important but congested cities. When can I take the train to Miami? 
This summer, with 16 daily round trips starting at $79 one way, explained the company's president, Patrick Goddard. Ticket sales are going to launch next month. Underpinning the applause and excitement, a business model test. Intercity passenger rail exists in every other country except ours. We're about 50 years behind Europe and Asia. It's about time we caught up. As the nation's first private high-speed rail service, Goddard is banking on Brightline serving as a model. Complimentary Wi-Fi, outlets everywhere, high-quality food and beverage. We knew that in order to get people out of their cars, it needed to be more than just about transportation. It needed to be about an experience. There are no other models like Brightline anywhere in the United States. FAU's John Rainey teaches urban planning and is a nationally recognized expert on sustainable transportation. This is kind of like their big debut. The business model has always hinged upon connecting South Florida to Central Florida. We are pioneering. Nobody's done this in over 100. The last person to do this in America was Henry Flagler. We think this is gonna serve as a great blueprint for other opportunities around the, around the country. We're already working on a project that would connect Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Tampa makes all the sense in the world for uh, to be the next connection for this intercity passenger rail system. But we're focused today on connecting Orlando and Central and, and, and uh, South Florida. As we say, stay tuned. Stay tuned, exactly. If this rail line works and the one in California works, we might see an expansion of private rail services throughout the United States. And airport officials here telling us that the new service also provides an opportunity for the more than 50 million visitors they get every year through this airport to now zip on down to Miami. In Orlando, Christina Vasquez, Local 10 News. Might just have to make that mm. trip. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Christina. Okay, next uh, week is the 75th anniversary of the founding of the State of Israel. And our They've been talking about that here in North Carolina as well, but sometimes the corporations and other factors that don't get in the way, because I know they've been talking about light rail in North Carolina. I think that they've been talking about it down to Charlotte and some other places, but sometimes the... Uh, business communities and other communities get in the way of the development. So hopefully it will be that Brightline can show the way so it can happen in North Carolina, New York to DC, and maybe like they said, LA to Las Vegas, because I know a lot of people would like to be able to make those trips and make them in a day and not have to get in a car or, or catch up with friends and take what can be a day trip if they can do it in a matter of an hour or so. It was beautiful, like I said, and the thing is, Good to experience it after hearing about it, communicating with their people. I got a chance to meet one of the vice presidents last year. Mm -hmm. I've kept in touch with their media people and came up. I was able to do it. I was down at the World Trail Expo on Tuesday because it actually started early morning on Wednesday. But to be able to actually see the train station in Miami, which is gorgeous, several yeah. levels, beautiful, and then be able to go up to Fort Lauderdale, experience that take the train back but it was just an experience you would not believe it's, it's not just a regular train okay no i mean look how beautiful those seats are they're leather seats wow and they're spaced out yeah you've got, you've got beautiful windows you can see outside the whole time it's gorgeous views and just amazing and once again they do plan to expand more right now the biggest thing is they're working on getting their orlando service set up probably later on the summer but definitely, if, if you're looking at maybe you don't want to drive, it's it's too short of a flight, as they explain, and, and too long of a drive. It's easier just to do Brightline trains. Brightline is how they call, they call them Brightline. But it's definitely good to experience that myself. I'll be writing about it, too. But just keep that in mind, too, because it sounds like a fantastic company. And they're just doing some incredible things. Yeah, it sounds like they're doing some really amazing things, everything. Well, that's what the videos that I found out didn't have any specific questions, but I did have some things to supplement the show. I did have a information if you wanted to see it about the yacht uh, company, the yacht ship. And it's only like a minute and a half. And then I'll turn it back over to you to okay. wrap up the show and everything. But if you'd like, we can check out a little bit about the yacht club and what they were all about or the yacht ship, because that was the okay. only video that I had pulled. And like I said, it's okay. about a minute and a half. Okay, good.
correction, that was the DC yacht thing than the DC hey. cruises, but I do have the yacht club and that's actually shorter. So let's check out 15 seconds on the yacht. A glance, a smile, an escape. Create a sea of memories aboard Yacht Starship. Dine, dance, and drink for one price with a bar that's free at sea. That's great. Yeah. Because once again, too, it just goes back to different options, mm -hmm. too. Because when you mentioned Yacht Club, the first thing it brought to my mind was actually MSC Cruises. Right. MSC Cruises has their MSC Yacht Club, which I've actually had a chance to sail in myself on the Davina. Got a great last minute by my business friend, Rick, who is, was president. He's now chairman. But last minute, he says, I've just upgraded you. Enjoy. Mm. Well, as I tell people with the MSC Yacht Club, they actually started doing these, I think, 2010 on their ships. And what they do is you have a private area your own private balcony stateroom. So you have your own private butler. It's key card access only. You've got your own private lounge, your own private restaurant. Then one sale lounge. And it was amazing because the first got on board and we had a private area to walk into actually board the ship to ourselves inside. The butler walked us to our stateroom, which is great. Balcony stateroom got in, but a special concierge. They helped us with different things. And the butler went to pack my clothes. I said, well, I know how to unpack my clothes, okay? I mean, <laughs> I felt I was being like a little princess, right? And then the next morning, my friend Sharon went, went down to One Sail Lounge. He called me and said, do you want me to bring anything? I said, well, you know what? I would like a cup of cappuccino, right? But comes back empty-handed. But guess what? The butler brought up my one cup of cappuccino. The butler did it. Yes. <laughs> and then our our actual dining was actually Lemieux on the other side of the ship. What they've done is now it's all in one big area. What they did was Lemieux, our restaurant was on the other side of the ship. We still access the rest of the ships. The diners were great, but we went there every night usually for dinner. And my butler sees me leaving and he says, well, where are you going? I said, well, I'm going to dinner at Lemieux. He says, I'll walk you over there. I said, I don't know. No, I'm going to walk over there. And then I did. I want to do a short excursion. I were going to Falmar, Jamaica, which I've not been to, but my friend Hugh Darley actually helped create that port for the cruise lines. And they actually brought something up. They brought a person up from the short excursion desk to deal with me personally. Oh, wow. It was wonderful. But when I got done, uh, I wrote about it. I did a lot of writing with my friend Jeff with uh, Premier Trail Media. I've been writing for 23 years on the side. But the title of my article was called Inside the MC Yacht, Yacht Club, The Butler Did It. The butler did it. <laughs> yes, but it was wonderful to experience that because I tell people it was like dying or going to cruise heaven. Right. It was wonderful. But just, you know, some fun things about that too, because they have them on all their ships. And what they've done too is with everything in the MSC Yacht Club, it's all, they've got everything right there now. Because I've seen them on board the Meraviglia. Uh, there are other ships, which I was at the christenings last year, the year before, but just great to see what they've done. You still have access to the rest of the ship, but once again, I tell you, once once again, once you sail on the Yacht Club, you just don't want to go back to the other way, if you can. You don't, you don't want to go back to the other type of uh, boats and the other types of cruises. You want to have that uh, premier experience. Right. Yeah, one thing that came up, too, is talking about a premier experience, you know, we've, we've uh, we shared more about Richard Branson. Okay, he is the founder, of course, with the Virgin Voyages, Right. and he never taken a cruise. And actually, some people talked to him about starting. He never taken a cruise at all. He hadn't before he started Virgin Voyages. He hadn't. That's that's okay. what they do. Was they call it Virgin Voyages, not Virgin Cruise Line. Also, what they do is their guests on board. They call them sailors. Okay. Mm -hmm. What they're doing now is they just announced it this week that they're going to uh, Sir Richard Branson is going to be hosting a Virgin Celebration Voyage. Oh, he's got, oh, wow. Yes, he's and it's going to be actually taking place on their newest ship, the Resilient Lady, on August 27th from uh, Paris, Greece. It's going to be Mediterranean cruise, too. And it's wow. going to have fireside chats with special performances, culinary explanations, and just, you know, behind the scenes look at Virgin. And it's once again their their voice, their, their concept is, you know, sailing club because they call their guests sailors. They actually launched their sailing club last year, and they really wanted to come up with a different, unique way to provide sailors with really fantastic uh, benefits and exclusive access to special moments. But once again, the special sailing with Sir Richard Branson on board is going to be taking place on the Resilient Lady, August 27th. It's going to be Mediterranean Cruise. 
Wow. It's going to be a Mediterranean cruise? Yes, it is. That just came up this week. So apparently he offered a job opportunity to Aussies to be in the cruise industry and everything. So that was something that I saw that apparently he did last year and everything. I'm not sure exactly what he did, but he is definitely given a incredible opportunity for some Australian folks. And that was announced back in last year in the fall of 2022. So right. He had some sort of competition where he was going to let the Aussies maybe drive the ship. I don't know what he's going to have the Aussies do, but he was doing a million dollar cruising giveaway that was geared toward the Australians and all in that space. So he has definitely done some unique marketing, but he um, had this opportunity that he was going to give for the uh, cruise industry right. and all in that space. But he is amazing. I mean, I've not had the chance to meet him, but when I was actually sailing, I was taking a crystal cruise back in 2016 and I did a, a flight sing tour at Tortola, but we flew over different islands. He actually has, and he owns in the British Virgin Islands. We flew over that island too. Wow. Yes. But just an amazing person. And as mentioned, he didn't really like the idea of, of using the term cruise because he didn't like it. So they call their guests sailors. That's what they call it, Virgin Voyages. And once again, as far as the protocols, it was really funny too. When they first announced they're going to be sailing out of Port Miami, they did this big, big, big special presentation. He flew in. Okay. And he went, went over to where they were doing the special announcement with the Port Miami officers, officials there too. And of course, Sir Richard Branson does like wear ties. So what happened was Tom McAlpin is the present CEO was there. He spoke. The Richard Branson came out. He spoke, but it was the gentlemen that were there from Port Miami were there in their suits and ties. He went over. He took scissors. He cut their ties off. Well, well I was just reading. <laughs> apparently, he has. Apparently, he has an Allen, and I love the name of the Allen because apparently he owns Necker Allen, a luxury yes. hot spot in the British Virgin Islands. Yes, that is I flew over people. that. I flew huh? over that island. Yes. But what I didn't know is he has another island called Make Peace Island, a heart-shaped gem located off the coast of Nosa in Queensland, Australia, about an hour from Brisbane, where Virgin Airlines has its Australian okay. headquarters. So apparently that serves as his home away from home for Richard, a place where he can relax with his friends and family. And that's what the representative said. So Branson typically visits the Air okay. island every year when he is in Australia. But yeah, it's, I love the name of the island. It's called make peace and apparently he did right. developed back in 2009 and uh turned it into a private retreat and in right. 2011 it opened its door to the public and became available to rent but it's not going to be right. a cheap rent but you can rent part of it as right. well but definitely that's amazing that he's got there and alan like i said i like the name make peace yes but he sounds like an amazing person down to earth and then even when they had some segments with the um their ships. Um, when it was, they've got this one place you can get ice cream, and their their dining menus are complimentary. But they have their ice cream parlor. It's called Lick Me Till. Uh, Lick Me Till. Yes, Lick Me Till. The ice cream was just phenomenal. We had little tastings. It was actually, on the Scarlet Lady, I was on the Scarlet Lady to see that ship when she was going to be first sailing out of Port Miami. They actually invited me other media people to go down to Port Miami. They had had us take Uber for Uber. To get born on the ship and it was in 2021 in the fall but it was great to see the ship after writing about it but gorgeous ship the cuisine was wonderful the restaurants are smaller they're not huge main dining rooms etc but we did go over to lick me till to try different tastings and at one point they had one video before they filmed where he was actually passing out ice cream too oh he was actually passing out the ice cream not, not on board the ship i was on but he had done that before one time too well, apparently this adult, uh, I did find out what he had done and everything, but apparently on the Today Show back in last year, the latter part of last year, he was excited about their uh, cruise ship down under and he was offering a million dollars worth of free boarding passes in a competition. So they had an idea of creating right. an um, adult only cruise and all in that space. So I guess he was offering these to those folks that were down there in Australia, because this year, the year we're in, is the uh, third ship that they're sending to Australia. So he's got a competition for your viewers, meaning the viewers of the Today Show, to let a hundred of them come on the ship for free, and they can bring their partner along 
as well. So apparently he was offering this to get some enticements going on in that. Right. That's an interesting thing. And I'm guessing that that was the uh, space there that was going on in Australia and all along. Right. The lines. But that's a good way to wrap things up because he seems like such a, a, a phenomenal person. Mm -hmm. And it's good to share his stories too. I mean, oh, yeah. to become um, Sir Richard Branson is really fantastic too, but he's very, seems very down to earth, very caring and want to give back in just fun different ways too. Yep, no doubt about that. It does seem like he's a, a caring person and definitely somebody that cares about the positivity and all along those lines. So I'm going to bounce off and everything and then I'll okay. let you uh, close out everything. But it's been a fantastic conversation as always. We'll be back at our regular time on Friday, but it was yes. the holidays and everything. But we'll see folks back on Friday at around uh, three o'clock. So we'll yes. see you back at that time. And who knows, we might have some more news and maybe even some more news from Sir Richard Branson. Yes. I'm going to bounce off and let Okay. Well, thanks again for joining me today. I know it's Father's Day, so we need to once again recognize all the wonderful fathers out there and recognize them in wonderful ways too, because if we didn't have fathers, we wouldn't be here. Thanks again for joining me today on Good Ship Happens. I like sharing positive stories, real stories, about what's going on in the cruise and travel industry. And there's so much wonderful things going on too. So it's good to share those positive, true stories and get people excited about being able to go back on a ship again. Okay, so let's keep that in mind for my, my next week's episode. Good Ship Happens. Thank you for joining me today, Cindy Bertram. Until next week, thank you. Hi, Richard. How are you doing? Ahoy, Jennifer. Lovely to see you. I'm so excited we're partnering on Virgin Voyages. Yeah, I'm really excited too, but I was thinking that maybe before we announce it, that we should decide on my official title at Virgin Voyages. Yes, and I already have a few options for you. Okay. Uh, what about something catchy like, don't be fooled by the ship that I got. I'm now Jenny, Jenny from the dock. Okay. Dame Jennifer Lopez. Isn't there like a paperwork and like a sword involved? Supreme Goddess of Mermaids. You know what? Let's just tackle the title thing later. I'm just excited to share our gorgeous ships with the whole world. Okay. Look, I'll brainstorm a little more and catch up soon on it. M Mermaid in Manhattan? <laughs>